Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and I just got back from the new film, Spy. When you think of most action comedies, you usually think of a film that's light on comedy or light on action and doesn't really get to do either very well. And especially when you think of the current wave of mainstream studio comedy that we're in right now, that's not the kind of comedic film that handles a plot very well. It's really good at doing simple logline kind of plots like, oh, we have a bad neighbor, we need to get revenge on them. If you can describe it very quickly, that usually works well for most mainstream big studio comedies. But Paul Feig isn't one of those usual comedy directors. He's probably the best big studio comedy director working in Hollywood today. And I think one of the things he does very well is understanding what's important to the movie and what you need to get out of it. And Spy does both the laughs and the action actually fairly well. And although you could say it kind of fails at being like a James Bond spoof, which it kind of tries to do and then drops and brings back, and it does get a little too complicated and it is a little too long, it's still actually manages to be one of the better big studio comedies to come out this year. Melissa McCarthy's character of Susan Cooper, who is the desk agent to Jude Law's spy character of Bradley Fine while he goes on and does the missions. She stays at her computer in an office in the basement and tells him what to do and what to look out for until one day that he is killed by a bad guy, Raina, played by Rose Byrne, who wants to sell a nuclear device to a terrorist organization. But as she kills Jude Law, she says into the camera, all of the agents and the identities of them and that she will kill them so as the CIA is not exactly sure what to do since they can't send any of their agents in because in this movie there's like only four CIA agents which makes like no sense but Paul Feig likes to simplify things so they still work within this kind of comedic style so you just kind of go with it. Melissa McCarthy is then sent into the field to just gather information and eventually gets closer to Raina, doubles as her bodyguard and hopefully stop this nuclear device from getting in the wrong hands. Melissa McCarthy is probably one of our more reliable movie stars, not just because of her box office performance, but also because of her actual performances. This is actually her big starring big studio vehicle. Tammy was more of kind of like a Fox Searchlight thing, but this is the big budget, big star movie for her. Usually she's playing second fiddle to someone else. And the performance in this film kind of matches that. She gets to start off being the earpiece girl to Jude Law and eventually grows through being in the field and changes and becomes the foul mouth character we're used to from things like Identity Thief and Bridesmaids. You see her become that character, so it feels a lot more fleshed out. It doesn't feel that dimensional of a character, but her performance adds all those dimensions really to it, even though if you can clearly tell it's not there in the script. She definitely shows a lot more range than she's shown in one movie before, and especially because she has to do a lot of action sequences in this film, which I don't think I've ever seen her do before. Maybe it's because Ghostbusters is coming out with Feig and her. It shows like how reliable of an actor she is. When you think of a really reliable character actor, which is something that she started off as, they can really just take a nothing role and make it into something. And in some ways, that's why she's so good at movie stardom, is that she can take any of these roles and still do a pretty great performance. The film itself is a little uneven, and there's certain things about the film that kind of hinder it. The movie is hindering her more than her performances, and it reminded me of just like how likable she is. She's probably one of the more likable comedic stars around today. She works incredibly well with Paul Feig. Anytime I hear Melissa McCarthy is in a Paul Feig movie, I'm very excited. I think all of her best work has been with Paul Feig. In my mind, there are movies that Melissa McCarthy is in that are directed by Paul Feig, and then there's everything else. She has not achieved in any other director's movie what she has achieved in a Paul Feig film. Their work together kind of reminds me of like Marion Davies and King Vidor, like a director and actress comedy team that works like gangbusters. I think it's kind of his style that he prefers comedy and she has that groundlings training that will work really well with his direction style. It just always seems to work and even though each of these films are pretty different she always manages to bring it performance wise. Maybe more than his direction you could say. I don't think this is actually as good as the previous two films Bridesmaids and The Heat. The Heat was actually a lot funnier. The action in this is a lot better done than in the heat, but
but the heat was a lot funnier. I laughed throughout the whole film. It just like doesn't stop. And in this film, it felt like there were a lot of breaks between jokes. There's still jokes that made me laugh a lot. I haven't laughed at a movie in the theater like this in a while. It's still very hilarious. He's trying not to just make comedy filled and packed with jokes the way Bridesmaids and The Heat were. And in some ways, like, I kind of miss that. Even though I've often complained about when this newer school of comedy tries to do a film that has more of a plot, it usually doesn't work. I think this film kind of does work, and I kind of respect this film a lot more than, like, something like The Interview, which tried that, which, regardless of controversy, wasn't all that good. It is kind of a spy parody. I don't think the opening credit sequence trying to parody a James Bond opening credit sequence really works because it's not really going for the James Bond thing. And James Bond parodies feel very old hat at this point. Austin Powers, Spy Hard, but more so Austin Powers. Like, that wasn't too long ago. This is more of a general spy movie parody. You definitely see Paul Feig growing as a director, probably growing into someone who can do more action. Maybe that's what he wants to do with his career. He doesn't want to just do a comedy that's filled with jokes. But that's probably the parts of this film that I like the most. He does seem to be able to work this style to his advantage better than even Apatow himself. It's like he gets the kind of movie it is. The plot of the movie is a little convoluted and silly and doesn't make a lot of sense and it does feel a little cliche, but do you really want to be concerned so much with the plot of the spy espionage thing in a movie like this? No, you don't care. You want to laugh and you want to have a good time. It's runtime kind of makes you actually start to think about it, which is a bit of a problem. I think this film maybe should have been cut down. This film had a really great supporting cast from Jude Law to Rose Byrne to Bobby Cannavale and Allison Jenny and even Peter Sars of Waltzes from Space. They made good use of everyone in the supporting cast. I think that's another thing about Paul Feig's films. He always litters it with a great supporting cast in all of his films. I really particularly like Jason Statham and I think most people will be talking about how funny Jason Statham is. He's certainly having a comeback year with this and Furious 7. I think this will probably be the standout because you don't really think of him as someone that can be funny, but not only is he funny, he's very Jason Statham. It's not like he's created a new role for himself. He's using the regular Jason Statham role to be funny, which is actually really cool. You think of most movie stars and they do a comedy, they're like somebody else. But Jason Statham is just playing Jason Statham. There's a genius simplicity to that. That he kind of holds his own also is pretty remarkable. He kind of does the kind of role Melissa McCarthy usually does where you can't wait for her to be on screen. Since she's the lead in this film, it's kind of interesting that they still have kind of a breakout supporting performance from Jason Statham. The other kind of breakout star was Miranda Hart, who I've noticed a lot of people aren't liking her performance as much, but I actually liked it. And she has a sitcom in England called Miranda. Her and Melissa McCarthy had pretty decent chemistry together. When you're doing these big budgeted comedies is they can often fall by the wayside from trying to be too glamorous, trying to not be as concerned with the comedy of it. And the action sequence is particularly one in the kitchen, which everyone says is kind of a comment on feminism, how everyone says like, oh, women, they should use their place as the kitchen and stuff. I don't actually think they were saying that as much. I mean, maybe they were a little, but that's a really great sequence and shows how great of a physical comedian that Melissa McCarthy is. This film really knows the kind of movie it should be. It is a little uneven, and it isn't like her best work with Paul Feig, but it's still a pretty decent Paul Feig-Melissa McCarthy collaboration. I kind of just like seeing like the heat and just laughing the whole time. My face hurt from laughing too much, and I don't get that as much with this movie, but I still did laugh a lot. I didn't like Bridesmaids as much the first time I saw that, so maybe if I see this repeatedly on HBO, I will feel differently in like a year or two, because I feel like two years after Bridesmaids, to me, it was like this amazing classic I would watch anytime it's on, and when I first saw it, I wasn't as enamored with it, but I don't really get the feeling that's going to happen as much with Spy. It's a good enough mainstream studio comedy, but maybe that's more talking about how shitty studio comedies usually are. My favorite comedy of the year is probably still what we do in the shadows and that's actually more of a direct parody than this is really trying to be although it's 
saying it is and saying it isn't. This gets into kind of the problems with the style of doing something like this and doing a little bit of the James Bond thing, but not entirely. Although Paul Feig and Melissa McCarthy's performance keep it in the right area for most of the film, it almost feels like they're doing a really good game of volleyball, but eventually the ball's gonna drop and we're gonna find out that they have all these things that they kind of address but didn't exactly know what to do with. The Heat wasn't exactly a buddy action movie. It was mainly concerned with being a good comedy that was also a buddy action film. This is more concerned with the spy stuff, but it is cool they don't shy away from that and just make it a comedy. I feel like that wouldn't have worked either. The James Bond stuff and its length and the spy plot that was just very generic didn't really help this movie. Having everyone it had in it has enough fun and hilarious moments that regardless if you're bored by those moments, you won't leave hating it or anything. It's more of a mild opinion after watching it, but like a strong mild opinion. So if you have seen Spy and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.